Hey everyone and welcome back to Fundamentals Simplified. This is going to be another update for your weekly forecast for the upcoming week starting on the 21st of August 2023. So as always let's start with the upcoming uh, calendar for the fund fundamental side of things and see what are the news that are coming out and what to look out for. So straight off the bat I can see that uh, we have uh, quite a few red news as well as orange news that are coming out mainly to do with the flat, uh, flash manufacturing PMI that will come out from the eurozone as well as the as England in the UK and as well as in the US as well so this is also a good indicator to see how the economy is doing in the eurozone as well as in the UK as well as in the US as well and then we also have uh, quite a few uh, Fed speakers also speaking on Friday so Friday could be quite a bit of a volatile day uh, because we've got uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell also speaking as well uh, in the in on Friday afternoon as well, so this could be quite important and we could see quite a bit of volatility coming in at the end of the week, uh, but also uh, come to midweek as well from Wednesday there can also be uh, volatile uh, uh, in the markets as well uh, due to the news that are coming out as well. So do look out for the flash manufacturing PMI uh, uh, data to come out on uh, the euro as well and the UK and the US. There also we have the uh, unemployment claim that will come out. So obviously last week when the uh, unemployment claim did come out from the US, uh, it was, uh, bear with me find it quickly. So the unemployment rate claim on Thursday was uh, from a, a expected of, two, of 240k, it came down a little bit to 239k. So it's not a big change really. So uh, there wasn't really much of a change in that in in, in, the, in that uh, scenario. But um, again, it's coming out again this week uh, on Thursday. So do look out for this. And the uh, the forecast is for 241k. So let's see if there is uh, less people filing for unemployment in the US or uh, if there's if it's gone higher. And obviously you've got uh, another uh, FOMC spe uh, member speaking. Harker spe uh, speaks, so we'll see uh, how how that goes. And again, you got the Jackson Hall also uh, happened the whole day, so there might be also some uh, speakers that will speak out of the Federal Reserve that might might say something that can also have uh, some sort of impact on the dollar. So that's more or less it for the uh, news side of things. I'm going to just move on to the charts now and let's see what's happening on the charts. So we'll start with the Dixie now. Obviously, we have been pumping, pumping, pumping in the dollar for some time now. So if you look at it on the on the weekly, we can see very uh, clearly we've had uh, quite a few weeks, if five weeks really, of a bullish uh, dollar. So if you look at now the lower time frame, what we can see, or even if on, on the daily, it kind of looks like is price running out of steam now? are the bulls running out of steam and that is the question and if you go down to a lower time frame so if you look at it now we've come to an area of interest which this is the daily order block and we can see that there has there has been some sort of slowdown and looks like more like a range here so obviously i've already marked this out and as you can see um this blue line here was a gap that I've, I've been talking about that needs to be filled round about here so now that that's been filled we can get rid of it we have another gap just above the 104 area here so price can still go higher and look to fill this uh, gap here and also come into the 104 handle currently right now where we are at is we have slowed down and prices seems to run out of steam so it's right around where the order block is so again this could be an accumulation of orders being taken and then what we could we see is possibly a breakdown of some of this all right and we can see maybe some of these uh, uh trend of liquidity that's been uh, uh building up some of these demand areas start breaking and we start seeing uh, the dollar uh, going lower now obviously i am looking at the data and uh, looking at the economic side of the dollar um numbers are really good so the economy is doing really well so i don't at the moment currently see any reason why um they, anyone should be uh bearish at the moment with the dollar um unless there are signs that you know there are going to be uh the feds pausing in uh, rising uh, interest rates then that could be a uh, dollar bearish but at the moment 
with the economy and the data that's coming out of the US, it looks very positive. So um, the dollar can only go higher. But right now, obviously, price is slowing down. So right now, how uh, things are, and especially um, if you look at uh, when I'll show you the other currency pairs, such as the uh, pound as well as the euro, what you will see is, uh, is a lot of ranging going on at the moment. And uh, price action is quite horrendous at the moment. Like It's not really clean and there's not really that kind of opportunity because it's more or less ranging. And that could be due to the time of the season as well, where we're in the summer, in the British summer, we're in the British summer here in the UK. And people are away, so big traders are away from the desk, probably enjoying the summer, enjoying the holidays, enjoying the school holidays, away with the family. So they're not actually at their desk. So that could be partly one of the reasons why we've seen like, you know, ranging markets and hopefully uh, come September, um, coming to the end of the summer, we could see uh, price uh, making, a, showing the actual direction that it wants to move and be to a downside or the upside. So we just have to, uh, if I try to trade in the range, which is not always, not too hard, but uh, to actually see a clear direction, we might just need to wait a little bit more longer, maybe a few more weeks before actually price breaks out either to the upside or downside. But for now, the way I'm seeing it is we are within this four hour high and four hour low. I'll put a little question mark on this trend line liquidity. And this is only going to be confirmed once we see price actually breaking below the trend line and we start seeing like bearish candles flashing, flashing down uh, very aggressively. Then we know that all these uh, demand in the market has been taken out and now price is uh, breaking through these demand zones very easily. So obviously the first, if it does uh, come lower, then obviously the first area that I'll be looking at is this uh, H4 order block here. But obviously price can also keep carry on going a bit more lower. Um, this massive candle here, bullish candle here, I marked at a 50%. So um, I would want it to come lower to at least feel 50% first of this uh, bullish candle. And then maybe if it does come lower, then actually feeling up 100% of this uh, bullish candle. But that again, we'll have to wait and see, and that will take some weeks before that even happens. But right now, there's not a lot of analysis to do apart from what I've just mentioned and just uh, observing and watching how price action reacts around these levels as well as this area here. But there's no saying that it can't go higher and fill this uh, gap as well as come to the 104 handle, and then we see that uh, pullback. But fundamentally, I think uh, the dollar does look like it can still go, go higher. Right, moving on to the pound against the dollar. So I've already marked out this box here. Um, obviously, there's a bigger box here where it's ranging. I know that. But just to look at currently with, with price action, we can really see there's another range. So big range possibly here around here. And then you've got small uh, ranges happening within that massive uh, bigger range. So right now, price is obviously dreadful, not really looking good. Um, price came into this order block and uh, it reacted off it and then again bounced off the 1.27 handle around here and not going lower. So where we are really playing with is where this order block has is is, is held and uh, this is where the daily low is currently. I've updated that and I put a daily high here. Um, I, I've not messed around with the four hour high or low. I've just kept that very simple because right now we're either playing around looking for opportunity when the car price comes into this order block or the 1.28 uh, area and look for a selling opportunity or if it goes into this order block then yeah look for another maybe selling opportunity if it comes lower into this area is where you want to look for a buying opportunity so this is the more or less uh in a range so when it goes to the top of the range you want to sell when it gets to the bottom of the range you want to buy so that's more or less it at the moment but if price is slowing down if you look at the weekly this is uh, something that i've been not noting for some weeks now we can see price is bouncing and uh, it looks like the uh, sellers the bears are losing steam and looks like they lost the momentum and this has been going on for a couple of weeks so what that tells me is again if you look on the daily we can see clearly we're in a range around all this this area price action here so what this tells me is if price is running out of steam, one, two, if it keeps coming and doing what it's been doing by leaving weeks behind and coming lower, price is clearly accumulating uh, orders, okay? There's orders been accumulating, and once all those orders have been taken, then we're going to see a massive push, okay? Now, that can be due to fundamentals. 
and I think that's what it needs to be. It needs to be based on the fundamental news or data that comes out, a big event, and that will be the catalyst that once the orders have been taken, price shoots out either to the upside or downside. But because we have already been shooting down already, we've been going down anyway, um, it should have carried on going lower. But for some reason, it's pulled around here. That tells me maybe the sellers are losing steam and maybe not looking to take price any lower. So now the buyers are now what they're doing is taking price higher, taking orders, and then coming lower, taking more orders. But eventually, all the buy orders will be taken, and then we look to go higher. That's at the moment what I'm thinking because again, with the data again, because you've got to mix the fundamentals to understand certain moves. Uh, that are happening or could happen so you're anticipating by the same time also understanding fundamentally uh, what could uh, drive this uh, move so with the pound um, the data that's coming out and how things are looking there is a chance that uh, the bank of england will carry on raising interest rates so obviously um, speculators as well as investors they are looking into like not not trying to bet against the pound but actually try to actually buy the pound because there is a chance that the uh, bank of england could carry on rise raising interest rates instead of actually pausing and it's not a good mix if i'm honest with you because if i'm bullish on the, the uh, dollar as well as bullish on the pound then this would not be a good pair to actually trade and that's why we're having a bit of a contradiction where price is uh, ranging in, on the great british pound against the dollar and the dollar is rising on the dollar index so Personally, this would not be um, a good uh, pair to trade right now because they both could actually go higher. So if both are looking bullish, then that's why you get a range. And this is obviously something that's, uh, uh, if you didn't know, is actually um, part of experience. Just knowing that uh, when two pairs are actually bullish, then you're not going to get one going higher and one going lower. If both pairs are uh, bullish, then obviously you're going to get a range in market. And that's what's happening right now here. So maybe it might be best to actually leave this. Unless you, uh, you're a more seasoned and more uh, experienced trader, then you can actually do what you feel is best and you know what you're doing, then that's absolutely fine. Uh, if you're not too sure, then I would actually wait for a clear breakout in wh whichever direction and then look to trade in that direction. Going on to the euro. So same thing, the euro is also, as you can see, it mirrors the dollar index. So again, the way the uh, dollar was uh, index was going up, in that kind of sort of price action we've seen a similar sort of price action on the euro uh usd pair we can see that price is obviously coming to this order block um it's it's still holding but again it could it is no saying that it can't actually go and test this weekly low or even go lower into this uh daily order block that i've marked out obviously i can also refine this but i'm not going to refine it until price actually gets into this order block again i put a question mark in maybe could this be a trend line um liquidity build up where all this supply has been taken out of the market for eventually price to break out of this trend line and then break through all of this sort of um, supply uh, in the market take all that supply out and carry going higher again what we could see is come price could come in and test this area first if price was to come higher go higher so this would be a good area to look for again Going higher would make more sense because we can see that this bullish candle has not been 50% uh, of that bullish uh, bearish candle has not been filled. So that needs to be filled one. And two, we have this unmitigated order block as well. So this would be a more of a higher probability. But again, if you were in a buy and price did break higher, then again, you and, and breaks above the H4 high as well, then this would make a, a good area to target to take profit, I would, I would say, um, if that was the scenario of the case. The only reason sales that I'll be looking for on the, the euro really would be if price breaks below the weekly low. If price breaks below the weekly low, then again, you can anticipate price to go into this order block. So th there is a potential sell on a retest of this uh, break of a low. But other than that, like I said, price is really price action has not been great. I've explained why that could be the reason. So I'll more or less leave it the way it is right now. And the, the, the little few uh, tweaks that I've done in terms of the highs and the lows, uh, maybe there's some of the order blocks that I've also tweaked a little bit and uh, updated. You can also implement this. Uh, but other than that, um, I wouldn't do uh, analyze any more further until I see a clear, clean price action, but also uh, look at the data that's also coming out this upcoming week. And hopefully I can give you all a better uh, update uh, this uh, next uh, next week, hopefully.
So again, if you like this uh, video, again, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Can you please subscribe and uh, help grow the channel? Um, thank you to everyone that has subscribed. Uh, we are up, I would say, I think it was 228 subscribers. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate you all uh, trying to help me grow this channel and please do carry on helping me grow this channel. If you are new, please do subscribe and I will speak to you all very soon. Have a good trading week and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care.